Hey, did you see that story about this poor 14-year-old kid in Dallas who made a homemade clock like a science fair project? He took it to school, but because he's a Muslim named Ahmed Mohammed, his teacher called the principal and they called the cops who arrested him and interrogated him and suspended him from school because they thought he was making a bomb, huge news all over America and even the world. Total proof of Islamophobia. Muslims can't get a break. Cops pick on Muslims. Schools pick on Muslims. Story was everywhere. I saw at least four different stories about it on the CBC alone. Good Morning America had him on, total media celebrity. But of course, he was a cute, well-spoken 14-year-old, brilliant in science, just the kind of folks America needs, but bigotry got in the way. Instant hero, I mean, Microsoft immediately couriered to him thousands of dollars worth of free stuff. Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook wrote about him, invited him to stop by and said, quote, keep building. Hillary Clinton tweeted about him, blamed the school's fear, and used the same words, keep building. And Barack Obama himself pulled himself away from everything less important and tweeted to Mohammed too, saying, cool clock, Ahmed, want to bring it to the White House? We should inspire more kids like you to like science. It's what makes America great. It was a perfect story and perfect timing, right when Americans and Canadians needed a good lesson about the perils of Islamophobia. I mean, we see a million Muslim men storming into Europe. We hear calls by old stock media like McLean's Magazine to bring 200,000 of those Muslim men into Canada. People are getting scared. What a good reminder, what a good lesson Ahmed Mohammed and the media and Obama have taught us about bigotry. All right, on to the next story. Except, do you mind if I ask a few questions here? First of all, can we see what the clock looked like, please? Uh, that's a photo of it. Does that look like a clock to you? I mean, sort of, I guess. But then Mohammed put it in a suitcase and he secured it with a cable. If you were a teacher and a kid brought something in a suitcase full of wires with a clock face on it, secured with a cable, would you be suspicious? Whether or not the kid looked like Ahmed Mohammed or whether he looked like Dylan Klebold, the white kid who murdered 13 other kids at Columbine, isn't the job of a teacher to at least be curious, especially after 9-11? Yeah, and a Muslim kid whose family came from Sudan. Sorry to say it, if a Muslim kid brings in something that looks like a suitcase with a clock face secured by wires, it's just actuarially sound prudence to inquire. You'd probably look at it if it were made by the peacenik Amish kid too, but yeah, a kid from Sudan, it's good practice to inquire. And in one of his early interviews, Ahmed Mohammed made a comment that he didn't repeat in later interviews. He admitted that it looked suspicious. Here, listen. I closed it with a cable, so because I didn't, I didn't want to lock it to make it seem like a threat, so I just used a simple cable, so it won't look that much suspicious. Really? Hang on. I thought that it was the white, racist, Islamophobic teachers and cops who were fear-mongering when they said it looked suspicious. But here's Ahmed Mohammed himself saying, indeed, it looked suspicious. So he closed it with a cable? Because if you've got a suitcase clock, the surefire way to make it look less suspicious is to add cables to it? That's crazy. Well, the story is Ahmed Mohammed took the clock to school and his first class was an engineering class and no problem. But that engineering teacher instructed him not to carry it around school, not to show it to other teachers because they might not know what it was. They probably wouldn't. It could cause a commotion. And yet Ahmed Mohammed defied that instruction. It was only when he took it to his next class, nothing to do with robotics or engineering, and the suitcase clock's alarm went off that that teacher called the principal. Why would you take it to another class other than to create a spectacle? And why wasn't that point pressed by Good Morning America or the rest of the media? Oh, and by the way, the principal and the police, they didn't arrest Ahmed Mohammed for making a bomb. They're not that stupid. They arrested him for making a hoax bomb, a bomb hoax. Just like if you or I going into an airport making jokes about hijacking planes or jokes about bombing them, we'd be arrested too. Not for hijacking a plane, but for making a hoax about it. Sorry, isn't that what we're supposed to do since 9-11? Police say Ahmed Mohammed was passive aggressive in response to their questions. He didn't explain why he made the clock. He didn't explain why he brought it to school. Apparently he didn't refer them to the engineering teacher either. Why not? Well, I've got a theory, but first I've got two more things I want to show you. One of them is small, but telling. Ahmed Mohammed did not invent a clock, didn't build a clock, didn't even assemble a clock from a kit. He bought a normal bedside alarm clock, simply took it out of its case, 
and screwed it into a suitcase instead. Here, listen to an actual expert on homemade clocks point out how laughable the claim is that Ahmed Mohammed actually built what he showed. Take a look. And what this is, is a commercial alarm clock, as you would purchase uh, in any department store and use at your bedside. And uh, all that he did was remove the plastic case from the alarm clock. Um, this is not an invention. This is not something that someone built or even assembled. I won't show you the whole video, but he goes through point by point proving that it was made in a factory like this. The other thing that's a difference is that these are custom, these are manufactured printed circuit boards with printed circuit board circuits in them with a microcontroller in the middle. And uh, those manufactured boards are used to manufacture products or professional engineer sample runs. Um, the uh, ribbon cables in between these are also indicative of a manufactured product. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, commercial clocks tend to have 9 volt battery backup and this even has the 9 volt battery backup. I mean he didn't even cut off the alarm clock's cord and use batteries instead. So a Muslim kid takes an alarm clock, takes off the cover, puts it in a suitcase, covers it with cables, and sets it so the alarm clock goes off in English class twice. Yeah, no wonder he's suspended. Cool joke, bro. Should have done it on 9-11. That would have been super funny. Like I say, he was not arrested for building a bomb. He was arrested for a bomb hoax, like some idiot pulling the fire alarm falsely. What do you think of Ahmed Mohammed so far? Well, I've got one more thing to tell you about. His family. They hosted a press conference for their boy. They were clearly in the room with him during at least one media interview. You can see his eyes darting to the side to someone giving him cues what to say on camera. In another phone interview with Mark Cuban, Cuban said he could hear the boy's older sister coaching him on what to say in the interview. Take a look. Did the teacher really do the wrong can thing? I, yeah, can no, I, can me, I, can I, can I go ahead. I've talked to the kid. Go ahead. Right, he's from Dallas, and I've talked to the people in the school district. The kid is a super smart kid, science geek. We talked about science. But while I'm talking to him on the phone, as I asked him a question, tell me what happened, because I'm curious, right? His sister, over, the, over his shoulder, you could hear, listening to the question, giving him the answer. So I don't know all the details of what happened, but what I do know, when I talked to him about science, when I talked to him about magnets, when I talked to him about creating things, he was very, very engaged. He's good. See, Ahmed Mohammed may or may not be a robotics genius, put me down as a skeptic, but his dad and sisters aren't just some poor schmoes who came to the United States dirt poor, hoping to build a better life in the land of opportunity. His dad is an Islamic activist in a nutty media hound kind of way. He's got the worst of both worlds. He's a Muslim extremist and a wannabe Kardashian. He came to America, but he has run on two occasions to be president of Sudan? Seriously, he's a politician. Of course, Sudan is hardly a democracy. It's a Sharia law dictatorship. They obviously didn't put him on the ballot, but Ahmed Mohammed's father, Mohammed El Hassan, campaigns for office there anyways. He's not a quiet, run-of-the-mill, normal immigrant. He's a bit of a clown. Sometimes he dresses like a candidate for president. Sometimes he dresses like a medieval sheik. He calls himself a sheik. He says he has hundreds of religious followers around the world, but reporters uh, can't find any evidence of this. Uh, but when he's not playing president or not playing religious leader, he debates people about Islam. Here he is, a few years ago, dressed up as a sheik, debating our friend Robert Spencer about Islam and human rights. Here's just 30 seconds of him ranting that any violence in the Quran was put in there by Jews or something. Take a look. This was derived from the Old Testament. Uh, as you call it in your Bible, the Old Testament, we call it the Old Testament in the Holy Quran, which is the verses of Medina. It was derived from the Old Testament. These verses, yes, is discriminate. These verses, yes, is what uh, it allow killing, allow fighting. Uh, man have four wives and a lot of things, you know. And do you remember that goofy media hound from Florida with the handlebar mustache, Terry Jones? who threatened to burn the Koran, and the whole world freaked out, and various excitable Muslims in Afghanistan murdered a bunch of people in response. Yeah, well look, you can agree with Terry Jones that we ought to have just as much right to burn a Koran as to burn any other religion's documents, a Bible, a Torah. I mean, it's not respectful, but it's like burning a flag. It's not in good taste, but in America, it's protected by the First Amendment. Well, Terry Jones got the whole world revved up about it, but Ahmed Mohammed's father saw an opportunity so he hopped in the family vehicle from Dallas, 
took the kids with him and drove out to meet up with Terry Jones to participate in what was called the trial of the Quran. They had a debate about the Quran, after which Terry Jones burned it. Now, Ahmed Mohammed's father claimed he didn't know that would happen. Yeah, right. Uh, but he loved the whole thing. He was made famous in newspapers all over America. He's a media hound. Do you, do you see what I mean about part clown, part media hound, part Kardashian from Khartoum? So you've got a kid who didn't make a clock at all, but made something look as bomb-like as possible. He brought it to school for some reason. His engineering teacher said, look, don't walk around with it, but he did anyways. He took it to another class where, surprise, the alarm went off. That teacher was suspicious as he knew she would be. He was passive aggressive with cops who clearly saw he was a hoaxer, a huckster, just like his dad. But hey, whatever, he got a bunch of free stuff from Microsoft and offers from Twitter to work there and an invi invitation to the White House and to go on the Ellen DeGeneres show and to go on the Stephen Colbert show. He struck gold. Not because he was the victim of Islamophobia, he clearly wasn't, but because he allows leftists to accuse America of Islamophobia, to falsely claim that that's why all these, you know, that that's why he got in trouble. All these leftists love him because of that, not because of what really happened, but because of what they can say happened to shame and blame America using him as a piece of evidence. Oh, one tiny thing. A journalist from the Daily Beast spent the day with Ahmed Mohammed and his sisters and his dad, the Kardashians from Khartoum. Well, Ahmed's older sister, Ayman, spoke with the reporter and told him why she was so excited about Ahmed's story and all the press he's getting because, you see, she too was suspended from the school. Here, I'll quote her exactly. I got suspended from school for three days from this stupid same district from this girl saying I wanted to blow up the school, unquote. Oh, really? So dad is a crazy fake sheik who participates in incendiary stunts, literally incendiary, burning a Koran, because he's a media hound. He runs for president in a country where that's not allowed, but he's a media hound, so he does it anyway. He's a kook. Boy, clearly taking a direction from his family, Ahmed builds a hoax bomb. Sorry, builds is the wrong word and he sets its alarm off in class. Oh, and his sister was suspended for allegedly making bomb threats too. And that sister, perhaps the one coaching him uh, what to say to the media on the phone. Is there any wonder this boy is being invited to the White House? <laughs> Hell, if Obama finds out the whole story here, he'll probably appoint Ahmed as an ambassador somewhere. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.